Hey folks, so in a recent case I was working on, it required me to relearn the fundamentals of how voice VLANs work. Let's go ahead and dig into the lab. All right, folks, so here we are in the lab environment, in which case the goal is to configure this port GE001 that the IP phone is connected to as not only an access port so that computers connecting to that port can get placed into the data VLAN 10, but also we wanna ensure that that IP phone sends its voice traffic into a dedicated VLAN. If, for instance, if you want to do things like class of service. So if you look at the middle of the screen here, I'll hop in and I'll see exactly what I have currently in place. If I do a show configuration, pipe display set. So here I can see I don't have much on the switch. I have uh, a root password set up and then I have DHCP uh, enabled, in which case this, this switch is also acting as the DHCP server. That's going to hand out addresses to devices uh, connecting in to a specific VLAN. So I went ahead and configured it to hand out IP addresses for the voice VLAN on the network of 10.0.2.0/24, and the same thing for the data VLAN. It'll hand out IP addresses on the network of 10.0.1.0. And then lastly, which is really important, I have PoE enabled on all of the interfaces, which is pretty critical because, as you can see, without power, <laughs> our switch isn't our IP phone rather isn't going to be connected. So I'll go ahead and plug that back in. And this is just the VLAN configuration. If we take a look specifically at interface GE001, we can see that it's only configured as an access port for the data VLAN. And I can even verify that by running a show ethernet switching table. And here I can see that the MAC address that I'm currently seeing ending in 47B1 is the computer that's hanging off of that port uh, that's being daisy chained from the phone. The phone actually isn't showing up yet because it hasn't learned from the switch which VLAN to communicate to the switch in order to send tag traffic. In order to configure this voice VLAN, I'll enter into edit mode. And the first thing that I want to configure is I'll do a set protocols LLDP dash MED. And I'll do an interface all. Oh. And this is really important because LLDP MED is the component that's actually going to communicate to the phone and let it know what VLAN it should be on. All right, next we're going to configure that voice VLAN by just creating the VLAN first. So I'll do set VLANs voice and i'll give it the vlan id of 20. and i want to associate it uh, to the uh, gateway interface that i have created on the switch which is going to be irb 20. so i'll do l3 dash interface and i'll specify irb 20. so boom we have that vlan configured and it also has a gateway sweet all right so the next component that i'll configure on the switch is set switch options and i'll do a question mark and i want to configure the voip options voice over IP configuration. And if I do a question mark here, it'll, the next parameter would be interface. And lastly, I'd specify the interface that I want to add to a voice VLAN. Or if I scroll down here, I could use the access dash ports parameter to apply this change to all of the access ports on this device. In this case, I just want to do this for GE001. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll do a question mark. And now I'll specify the VLAN that I want to associate to that uh, port to carry voice traffic. And now I'll go ahead and type voice and I'll hit enter and that is literally it. So I'll do a show pipe compare to see all of the changes that were made. I can see LLDP med, which has been configured. That's going to tell the, uh, allow the IP phone to know what VLAN to say, send tag traffic on and the switch options configuration, as well as the VLAN configuration. So that that particular interface knows what VLAN to place that tag traffic coming from the phone devices into. So here I'll go ahead and do a commit and quit and I'll do a comment configure point, and I'll hit enter. So another important thing to note while that's taking place in the background is that if I currently look at the settings on this phone and I go to status and then I go to network, I can see that currently it's enabled for DHCP, but it doesn't have an IP address, which is expected. All right. And so this commit just completed. So I'll do a show ethernet switching table and I'll do a pipe refresh five. And Hey, look at that. Uh, almost immediately we can now see that that voice phone is being learned in the voice VLAN and it has the MAC address ending in C9 E6, which means this device should now get an IP address from our DHCP server. So since the switch is actually acting as that DHCP server, I can do a show DHCP client binding and I don't see anything just yet. <laughs> so it's a little fat finger on my end. I uh, had the wrong command there. Now I can see that this device has handed out the address of 10.0.2.21 to the IP phone with the Mac of C9 E6. So I should be able to ping that, that IP phone now, 2.21, and that ping is successful. Yep. Sweet. So I'll go ahead and bring this phone a little closer here, just so we can uh, take a look here. And if I go into the settings and click status and go to network and back to the IP parameters, I can see that this is now all updated 
with the DHCP settings that it received after it uh, got placed on the correct VLAN. If I scroll all the way down, I can see that it now knows that it's supposed to send traffic on VLAN 20. So sweet. Well, folks, that is the end of this video. I hope you found this video helpful and it saves you some time. If it does, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for future network tutorials. As always, folks, thanks for viewing and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.